Hi, I'm Tommy and I'm Head of Training at Neon Springs. I would like to talk to you about how to make sure that your messages in a workshop or design sprint reach your audience in a way that they actually understand what you want to say. If you ever had a situation in which somebody kept asking you the same question again and again and again, even though you already answered it a number of times, it is possible that you did not address the actual content of the question on the right communication level. In order to help you out with that, this video is dealing with something that we at Leon call communication compass. The communication compass, as a regular compass, has four dimensions. You need to address all four of them as a facilitator, but potentially at a different level depending on the situation. Which four dimensions do we have? The first one is the fact-driven dimension. You will always have people in the room that are very sharp. They are very much to the point. They seem to be only interested in the results, the outcomes of the workshop or of the design sprint. And the only thing that they really respond to are the actual facts, the data, the figures, the numbers, the pictures, uh, the actual description of what's gonna come out at the end. Now, on the other end of the scale, you have people um, or types of people that respond better to something that um, is creative. So instead of delivering facts, which can sometimes seem very dry to them and maybe even scary, they need something that addresses creativity and allows them to be creative in the framework of the workshop. So, other end of the scale, creativity. So, you have the facts and the creativity of your communication compass. There are two more dimensions that we need to cover and two more dimensions that you will have to cover if you want to make sure that the audience in your workshop actually follows your lead. Next to these two dimensions, you also have the procedure-driven dimension, okay? or sometimes we call it the approach dimension. In this dimension, or on this level, it's all about how are you going to get to your results. So it's less about what's going to come out of it, and it's less about being creative about it, it's more about understanding, getting there step by step. And on the other end of the approach-driven dimension, you have the emotional dimension, the one where people react to relationships and to the atmosphere in the room. And that is something that is very important because a lot of times everything that happens in the room happens actually in this dimension rather than on the others. So, these are the four dimensions of the Neo Communication Compass. And I would like to briefly talk to you about how to navigate these. You might have been in a situation in a design sprint or in a workshop where somebody suddenly started to become impatient. Yet the, these are the people that you know would start checking their watches or would get out their smartphones and start looking at them or checking the emails. What does that mean? If you realize that something like this is happening, it's a clear indication that you might not be on the communication level that is relevant for them. And in this particular case that I've just described, your communication compass potentially should look more like this. What does that mean? You see, your communication compass is focused all on facts. If you encounter a situation like this, it is extremely important to clearly state for the people what are the goals of what you're doing right now the overall one, but also the goal of the small exercise, the task, whatever it is, the discussion that you're uh, running at that particular moment in time. And um, give them a clear outline of the outcome of what's gonna come out at the end, and make sure that they understand 
how they need to contribute in order to get to that particular result. This is the only way how they will respond to it and they will then get back into the workshop and actually participate with other people. So imagine now on the other end of the scale that you're actually delivering all of those drive facts, you know, figures, numbers, maybe even depending on your situation. And you're telling people what's going to come out of this and why this is important and what the actual outcomes are going to do. And while you're doing that, you notice that some people around the table suddenly start drawing little pictures on post-its or pieces of paper or they, um, they, need to, they start looking at other things and they seem very absent and they are not in the room anymore and they just look out of the window but typically they actually sketch something away. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are disinterested per se but it does mean that the communication level that is relevant for them the dimension that they feel you know, at home at has not been addressed. Yeah, it's way too dry, it's way too factual. What they need is something that becomes a little bit more creative. So your communication compass in that particular situation should look more like this. What does that mean for you? Well, instead of delivering dry facts or just going ahead with the next exercise, whichever that could be, Sometimes it might mean that you just simply need to incorporate now a five minute for a brain teaser. Something that allows people to basically do something completely different than what you're doing right now. And or gives them the opportunity and an outlet to continue with whatever they do in a more creative way. So call for a five minute brain teaser exercise and start working with them using the creative energy that is in you. It could happen that the others will have to be moved there because they might be on a different level and actually need something else. But if you address this in the right way, everybody else will follow as well. So, not only the fact, also the creativity is an important part of it. But then you will frequently have people that actually are very interested in how exactly these things that you're doing are going to happen step by step. If you had someone like this in a workshop before, these are the people that would raise their finger and they would say, excuse me, could you please once more, you know, outline just, you know, just for me, for my understanding, step, ideally like step by step, how exactly are we going to do that? So, you know, like what's the first thing, what's the second thing, and then what's the third thing? And ideally, you know, in a way that I can take notes. If something like this happened and you were, well, that's not necessarily the best way to respond to that. The best way to respond to that would be if your communication compass changes its format a little bit and moves the needle to the approach dimension. Your communication compass should now clearly point to the procedures and explanations of what is going to happen how. Because this is what these people are most interested in. You will always have situations in which all of those three things are not that important because it's not about procedures, it's not about approaches, it's not about facts or creativity. It will be all about how people feel at a particular moment in time. What's the atmosphere in the room? How they react to certain things? Are there conflicts? Is there something happening that changes the mood and the atmosphere of everybody in the room? If that happens, you as a facilitator, you need to make sure that you switch to the emotional level. Your compass should look like this. What does that mean specifically for you? If you realize that you need to address the emotional dimension of communication, then it most probably means that you have people in the room that are very interested in feeling comfortable. Comfortable about the situation themselves, but also making sure that everybody else in the room also feels comfortable. These are the guys that like to chat about things. 
things, that like to take time for a small talk around things, that like to give a little bit more context to things. You know, people that actually are more interested in the people side of things rather than the actual facts or even the procedures. These are the people that will not react well and will start feeling more comfortable in a workshop or a design sprint that only deals with the factual elements of things or only talks about the procedures. Keep that in mind and if you end up in a situation where you have the feeling that the emotions need addressing, take five minutes out of your agenda, skip whatever you're doing at that point in time and address the emotional situation in the room. This will make your life much easier because if you stick to whatever you're doing, the emotional part tends to grow with time. And if not addressed at all or not addressed properly, it could end up growing to a size where it suddenly explodes and you actually cannot do anything else in the room and you have to deal only with the emotional state of things. If you're facilitating anything, a design sprint or a workshop, you will have to keep your navigation compass when communicating in your hand and look at it from time to time in order to understand in which direction or which dimension you have to address. When you look at the picture, this is how it looks like in a perfect situation, but it seldom is exactly balanced. So going in a particular direction, depending on the situation, will make your facilitator life easier. This was our facilitation secrets video on the communication compass. If you want to learn more about facilitation in general, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't done so yet.